A question we often hear, is it too late for me to learn piano? Today we hopefully answer it and give you a couple tips to get started. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate your support and we love to interact with you. Piano facts. So we like to start all our videos with piano facts. If you're unaware, we have, you know, we just surpassed 10,000 subscribers. And, and we want more subscribers. Please subscribe oh, to yeah. our channel. We'll tell all your friends. Tell all your friends because they get piano facts before right. every video. <laughs> and this one, you know, in conjunction with, is it too late to learn piano? And, you know, we should answer that right off the bat. No, it's not no, too late. It's never. never too late. But this video is focused on how do you do it? How do you do it well? And how do you set a goal for yourself and get there? We're going to talk about baby grand pianos because as a beginner, what better way to start than having a really cool baby well, that's grand? That's what people come in and say, do you have a starter piano like a little baby grand? So, you know, so our piano fact for the day is... What is a baby grand? What is a baby grand? What is a petite baby grand? What is a, ba what's a true baby grand, right? There's the factual definition of a baby grand. Factual. It's, the factual one is that a baby grand piano is the smallest of all the grand pianos made by a specific manufacturer. So a baby in the line. Kimball made nine foot all the way down to the La Petite, which were like four foot eight, three or something. Oh, they were smaller. Yeah, they were really four and a half feet. Yeah, they were really small. Okay, the tiny piano and the rack was built on top. The music desk was on top. On the lid didn't even open. It was just all closed up unit, okay? Sounds it's nice. basically a tilted up spinet. But very cute, La Petite. That's not the same thing as that is the baby of their grand line, where at another time the baby of the Baldwin line may have been five foot two. Mm -hmm. And so that there isn't any real size definition by rule of thumb or law of piano what? that says baby grands are all this size, this size, or this size. Because I sold that one lady bought a seven foot piano and she got insulted. Someone came over at Christmas break and said, Oh, I love your baby grand piano. She goes, that's a seven foot concert. And she bought a bigger one. Yeah. Because someone called it a baby grand. Well, so, and so if you're confused by the verbiage that uh, a manufacturer uses describing their baby grands, don't worry, you're not alone. You know, us as a piano retailer, usually we'll tell people baby grand means if it's under six feet, you're usually looking at a baby grand piano. And that's kind of in people's minds. If it's under six feet, that's kind of the sizing of a baby grand. Of course, more people recognize like a four foot ten to a five foot six or seven to be the baby grand range. As you approach five ten, five eleven, that's so close to a six footer. People usually start categorizing that as a different size of pianos. But technically, we will say anything under six feet, you're probably still going to call it a baby grand. So that that's kind of baby grands. That's what a baby grand is. Um, so is it too late to learn piano, Ted? Tell me about... No. And we had this... The reason I thought about this was... New Year's resolutions are coming up, well, and everyone usually puts something at the top of their list. Yeah, you, you, or it's something that you always wished you did, and you put off and put off. Um, and we see adult beginners all the time. Oh, I never learned music, but I want my kids to learn. Well, I played why, once and I quit. Yeah, what's wrong with you learning now? And, and uh, you know, the twofold. I, there's two people that came in yesterday that... One of them is this uh, adult student, very excited to, to learn an instrument and, you know, came in for a little keyboard, ended up getting an in-home digital piano and is very excited to be learning for 2023. Um, just has all the enthusiasm right. to do it. Um, the other was uh, someone who had rheumatoid arthritis and they were just recently diagnosed and they were looking to get back into music because they, you know, they, they realized how, how much movement... Uh, well, just, just they realized what what they had when they learned piano when they were younger and they wanted to get back into it. And, you know, she was, you know, looking right. to, to pick back up music and, and get involved in her life again, especially as the as it gets harder to move. And she was, you know, it was just, it was, it was, 
it was interesting to see those both those perspectives of people adding music back into their life or for the first time, um, and knowing that you know it's it's a gift that kind of always gives. Um, and so it's never too late. Um, but how do I get started? You know, how where do I? How do you want to learn? Is is the question I always ask. That's about the first thing I say. Um, what is it about playing the piano you want? I mean, are there two or three songs that you wish you could sit down and play, or do you just want to sit down and make stuff up, or do you want to play exactly this piece, exactly like it's written, exactly like this guy, and you want to be able to learn? You want your instructions off of a piece of paper. And are any of those the right or wrong way to learn? They're all a way to play. And there so, is no right or wrong way. And I think that is the, what you need to come to the table with the, the mentality that you almost need to have is there's no right or wrong way to play. I am in charge of how I want to learn how to play the instrument. A lot of people will learn the entire thing by ear, some by sight, watching YouTube videos or watching someone else play. Um, there's teachers, of course, who are guides to your musical journey and can be a great starting point. Uh, there's online classes. There's, there's a whole bunch of different ways to learn, and there's not one right way. So if it's not jiving with you one way, it's not that you're not musical or not that you're, you're doing it wrong. It's just maybe you need to find a different approach to it. Um, so I, you know, I always recommend finding a teacher because that's usually someone who's going to guide you and who's been there before. Uh, but don't get frustrated if it's not jiving at first, it's not clicking. Always look for opportunities because music, again, is something that can be fun. Um, to Ted's point, find something you want to play. That's it. Find a song that, that uh, will motivate you, uh, give you the initiative to follow through all the dull, boring parts you got to do to get all the little motions together. And remember, anytime you're learning a song, whether you're learning it off the music or you're learning it by ear or you're watching a video of and just doing repetitive motion, it's the same thing as playing a video game. So if you play video games, you know you got to get to this level and do that. And then by the time you get to the end of the game, you go through it real fast. Well, there's a lot of people that play piano like that. They had the beginning of the song and they're real good. And towards the end, end of the song, they've never really practiced it. So like the, they're, they're not quite as perfect on that. Mm -hmm. But it's the same kind of muscle memory and stitching together of one set of motions after another that allows you to memorize something and go through with it. And it's a lot easier to learn that without having to maybe first learn how to read music. And if you already know how to read music and you're really good at it, then learn how to play piano like that. I've never met that person. It's a lot easier to just learn by watching someone or by color coding on their yeah. or to learn piano the way that you would learn guitar, uh, which is just by chords. And so, you know, remember, have fun. That's another, that, another the main role. important thing is have fun and almost play with something at, all the time. Always have another piece of music on or have a metronome or a beat, a rhythm so you can get the idea of what it is to be in time at the right time. So all these skills develop at the same time. Yeah, and, and I think it's just as important to have an instrument that makes you enthusiastic about playing it. You know, what, what that means to different people, of course, is, is up to the player, up to the person who wants to do this. If a baby grand is the reason you want to play piano, you always wanted to play a piano that has the, the lid propped up, that you see all the strings in front of you, go figure out a way to get a grand piano because that's going to make you play more and that's the goal to play more if it's if you want a digital piano that can record and you can add layers and you can get really into music technology go that direction so you know make sure you know your options and know that there's not a right instrument or a wrong instrument it's just what is going to actually help you get to where you want to go and that's setting goals i think especially as we go into the new year 2023 um it's important to have a goal for yourself and to measure your improvements towards that goal. Um, so if it's to learn five songs by the end of the year, go at them and don't get frustrated if you're stuck at the beginning section for a couple weeks or a month or two months or three months. Measure your improvements. You're Break always going to be making incremental improvements, whether it's timing or whether it's actual, you know, the, the mechanics of your fingers moving. Um, it's very important to make sure that you understand that even though you're not where you want to be, you have made improvements on that journey. Um, go back to having fun. If it's not having fun, change your goal. You know, right. it's okay in the middle of the year to change your goal and say, you know what, that's not what I want to do. I want to play this instead. Yeah, but also remember that a lot of times uh, playing a music instrument is absolutely the best and the funnest if you're sharing it with someone else. If you have other people that are playing music instruments as well, even if you don't know what you're doing, you'll eventually figure it out. It'll be fun from the get-go. Yeah, and then just remember to practice and spend time doing it. If you want to learn anything, it's going to always take time. Um, be patient. Make sure, you know, 
make sure you're, you're measuring your goals so that you can get there. But, but again, just if you put, take the time and you practice and you do it, you know, no one runs a marathon in one day. You gotta, you gotta, right. you gotta build up to it. You gotta build up momentum and, uh, and have fun doing it. Make sure you have the right instrument. Make sure you have the right guide. If you need a teacher, if you need encouragement from somebody, but we, you know, our goal is to see more people play instruments, play music. It's made our lives better. We truly believe it makes other people's lives better when you play music. And so if you have any questions, if you have any comments, any concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to us or leave comments or reach out to somebody that you know as a musician. I'm sure they're willing to help you start your journey. And it's never too late to learn. Never. Thank you guys for watching. This is Ted Barcelo. I'm Patrick Marr here at Alamo Music in San Antonio, Texas.